Hey what's up media makers, I'm Sam DeZeo and in this tutorial we are going to make some awesome uh, audio spectrum effects just like this. Um, as you can see on your screen right now, this tutorial really is not very difficult. This is something that really anyone can do even if you are a beginner. Uh, just follow along. Um, if you have not done so already, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel because we have a new video on media making and media production uh, every Tuesday and Friday. So hop on that bandwagon and press subscribe. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make this effect. This um, branding is all around my friend's CD. Um, it just came out and th that's where the song came from um, because I needed some sort of song, so I asked him if we could use it and he's actually going to use this little effect on his Instagram. So that's what I'm making this for, his Instagram page. Um, obviously yours might look a little different, but the principles are still there, so that's why we are doing this. And we're gonna start making this from scratch. So let's go ahead and make a new composition by hitting the create new composition button and we're just gonna call this audio spectrum because we're making the spectrum before we put it in a composition where we add the logo in the background and stuff so not the fancy stuff just yet um, we want to make it 1920 by 1080 um, 10 seconds is fine and 30 frame rate that's that's fine alright so I'm gonna hit OK so I want this to be a black background. It's just going to help me see things better. So I'm just going to hit this toggle transparency grid. Um, just if you're new to After Effects, that does not mean that we have a black solid here, a black background. It just means um, it's, it's just a different way of looking at the transparency behind your objects. All right, so now what we want to do is start making our audio, our, our visible audio, I should say. Um, so we want to go to Layer, New, Solid, and this can be really any color, um, so I'm just going to hit OK and call this um, Spectrum 1. Alright, so make it the size of your composition and hit OK. So now what I want to do is I want to drop a, um, an effect on here. So I'm going to type in Audio Spectrum and drag that on there. So as you can see what happened, it got rid of our color that we put on our solid, but like I said, it doesn't really matter because what really matters is the color that we have here. So before we do anything, let's go ahead and change that um, to a white color. So I'm going to click that and make it white, and then just make this one white as well. And um, so as we can see, if we scrub through this, it's just a bunch of dots. That's, that's not doing anything for me. Um, so the reason is because it's not actually connected to any audio. We have to tell it what audio we want it to work with. So if we go into our project and bring in a song, and I'm just bringing in the song that we used uh, for the example, and you just bring it into your timeline. And what we need to do is start positioning the song where we want it to play. So if I drop down, drop down audio, and drop down waveform, we can see uh, that this is the very beginning of the song. This is um, just kind of it fading in. So what we need to do is start just scrubbing in time and kind of looking for. But well, I'm I'm looking for the chorus of your song or of this song, but um, your situation might be different. Um, so I'm just kind of looking for any differences in the waveform. So this might be it. Uh, yep, I think so. Uh, yep, that was it. All right, so we have it in place, so now what we need to do is connect them. So I'm going to hit my Spectrum 1 layer, go into my Effects Controls, and then go to my Audio Layer option here, hit my drop down, and select the song. So now, automatically, as you can see, um, we have a little bit of motion, and it's connecting to our audio. So let's play this real quick. So as we can see, there's a lot of movement going on down here at the end um, on the left side. So what's, what that really is, it's mainly the bass of the song. So if we play this again, you can see that every time the bass, drum, or whatever that is hits, um, we can see kind of a boost in this area right here. Watch this. So the reason for that is our start frequency. So what that means, in a song you have high frequencies and low frequencies. And your start frequency is basically saying what is the lowest frequency you want to show on this grid. So, um, so we can see this better. I'm actually going to drag our uh, maximum height to about 2... 
1,260. And, you know, I got that number just because of the example um, that I used earlier. So that's why I know these numbers. I'm not just pulling them out of my butt, just so you know. So now we can see this a little bit better. It's a little bit, bit more distinct. Um, so now if I start playing with the start frequency, what it's doing is it's allowing less or more um, of the base area. And same with the in frequency, it's letting less or more of the higher areas. So if I start bringing this up, you can see that it's actually letting less of the base shown. So I'm actually going to put this at 100. And then to get rid of all the details of, you know, we can see this going down and then up and then down and then up and then down, up, down, up, and it's really, really refined and detailed. I'm going to bring my in frequency down quite a bit. So I'm actually going to bring it to 300. So what that does is makes it very wavy and not so much not so much detail. And there's a lot of bass in this song. So what I'm really doing is I'm focusing on the bass that comes along with this song. So now if we start playing this. Cool. All right. So I'm actually going to increase the amount of number or lines that we have here. And I'm just going to bring it up to I think I had 93. So that gives us a few bit, a few more, and I think that that looks pretty cool. And then the next thing I want to do is bring my softness down to zero. It's kind of subtle, especially zoomed out like this. But uh, I want no softness. I want this to be as sharp as I can. And then bring our thickness up to 3.8. So make it just a tad thicker. All right. So now what we want to do is make it into that circular shape. So I'm going to go to my effects and add polar coordinates. That needs to be added under our spectrum layer. So if we go to our type of conversion and drop down and go to react to polar and then drag that up to 100, what it does is it makes a perfect circle. Now the reason that you're not getting the top, and let me turn this off, is because this point and this point are not at the very edges of these points. So the easy fix for that is just to go up to your top and your start point, drag um, your first start point down to zero on the x coordinate, so the first coordinate here, and then this one to 1920 because that is the width in pixels of our um, of our composition. So now it's the full width, so now if we go turn our polar coordinates on, we have a perfect circle. All right, so we're getting somewhere. So now what I want to do is only put the um, the waveforms on one of the sides. So I'm actually going to go to side options and hit side B. So that's just going to affect the outside. We're not getting any of the um, stuff on the inside. So now if we jump back to the example, we can see that we have um, these lines around here, but then we also have a solid line that's going throughout uh, this entire thing just a little bit higher than it. So what we need to do to make that possible is duplicate our spectrum and then rename this one Spectrum 2 and I'm going to um, hide our Spectrum 1 so we're able to distinguish it a little bit better. We want to go into our display options and instead of digital we want it to be analog lines. So now what it's giving us is this sort of line wavy effect. So if I go ahead and turn on this layer, we can actually see that this line is happening on top of these individual lines, but I want a little bit of a gap. So all I need to do is increase this number, 540, um, on both our start and ending points. So I'm going to bring this up. Um, I'm not sure the number off the top of my head, but we're just gonna eyeball it. So let's do 590. And then also this one needs to be 590. So let's just zoom out a little bit and we can kind of see. Yeah, I think I think that's all right. We might uh, just bring it down to 580, bring it down a little bit. I think that'll work. All right, so the last one that I want to do is actually the inward. Uh, spectrum. So I'm going to again duplicate this and it's spectrum 3 and then I'm going to turn these both off so I can see what I'm doing and I'm going to switch sides so I'm going to hit side A and then I'm going to turn my display options back to digital 
so we have um, our lines here again and I'm going to bring this down so our spectrum one we remember is 540 um, so I'm going to want to bring it lower than that so I'm going to let's bring it at 510 we'll try that 510 so this is our uh, Y position on our start point and end point so now I can turn both of these on and we can see there's a little bit of a gap um, we might want to bring it down just a little bit let's let's just go to 500 and I think that'll work so now all I need to do is increase um, my frequency bands so I'm gonna crank that up quite a bit and then I'm also going to crank up the thickness so we can see that it starts to create almost a solid a solid shape almost um, and you want to get to the point where you have so many bands that you can't see the detail but at the same time you don't want to overdo it because the more bands you have the more rendering that the computer is going to need um, and it might overwork your computer so you kinda of want to be careful with it but I think I found a decent place now the one thing that I know is that I'm gonna have this logo in the middle so I'm not gonna want all these points kinda of shooting out at the logo so I wanna kinda of be a little bit more careful with my spectrum 3 so I'm gonna to go to my maximum height and drag that down just a little bit so we see um, the mimic the mirror of what's happening up here it's just not as uh, distinguished it's not as tall or high so we'll let this render out and let's take a look because of who you Very cool. All right, so I know what you're thinking. You're probably wondering what's happening here with this thing. Now, if we go back to our comp, we can see that that's not exactly happening. What is happening is we have a mirror image on this side and on this side. So how does that get done? So basically, I'm going to go back into my project and drag my audio spectrum onto a new composition. We're creating a new composition with audio spectrum in it. So now it looks the same, but everything is kind of pre-composed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask one side of this. So I'm going to hit my rectangle tool, make sure my audio spectrum is selected, and just make a mask over this thing. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball the middle of it here because I'm only wanting one half. And on my case, I want the left half. So I'm going to kind of refine this by grabbing and just getting it as close as I can. I think that's the very center right there. So now what I want to do is basically just select this, hit Command D to duplicate or Control D if you're on a PC, and then just go up to Layer, uh, Transform, and Flip Horizontal. So now we have an exact replica on both sides. Perfect. So if you never need to adjust anything, you can go back into your audio spectrum. And um, if you're adjusting anything, just know that the only thing visible is going to be on your left side of the screen. So I'm going to go back into my audio spectrum 2, and I'm actually going to just rename this final comp. All right, so now we're getting almost done. So basically all I need to do now is drag in my sky background, put it on the bottom. Um, I'm going to scale that up, bring in my logo, which in my case happens to be black, but I want it to be white. So here I'll scale it up real quick. And then all I need to do is add a tint effect. Uh, drop that on the logo and then make both of these white. That'll make that white. Um, makes it a little bit hard to see, but that's not a problem because we can simply just add a drop shadow. And I know I'm going through this fast because that's not the point of this tutorial. So I'm just kind of rushing through this a little bit and bring that up. So as you can see, it is as easy as that. Because of who you Seriously guys, I recommend you go into that audio spectrum effect and just start playing around because you can customize it to your heart's content. It is such a cool effect.
And also, seriously, like, if you guys need any help, do not hesitate to ask in the comment section below because that is why I'm here. I'm here to help and guide you in the right direction in your media creation needs. So, if you like this video, go ahead and hit subscribe, and there will be a new video every Tuesday and Friday so you don't want to miss it. And for more awesome tutorials, you can go ahead and hit those links on your screen right now, and I will see you in the next video. In my heart.